Hello, hello, good evening everyone, good evening and welcome. So, um, here we are once again getting to get started on a new week. We are now going to be um, covering, well, the last week of this course and uh, I hope you guys are having a great time at it. Now, something that is going to happen tonight is that we're going to be talking about the past. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting class, I think. And uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of details, a lot of nice details regarding, well, time in the past and things that had to do um, with the past. Now, before that, I would like to get you guys into creating examples with the um, the last topic that we covered last night. I mean, uh, last week, which was giving suggestions. So it would be great if we can start with that, you know, suggesting a few things or using this topic to create some examples that come from our own. And um, yeah, then we can start moving on into uh, more into the topic of talking about the past. Um, the question for tonight is once again going to be related to that. It's going to be following the same idea, the same structure as we are, well, indeed going to be talking about, well, the past. So Hopefully, you guys are doing amazing. And uh, as I said for tonight, the question that we're going to be answering is going to be, what is something, okay, think about this, what is something from your life um, 10 years ago that you would like to bring back? So something about your life or from your life 10 years ago that you would like to bring back. So think about it. Think about things you used to have um, mostly. And please, 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 eso se lo voy a decir en español. Por favor, tratemos de mantenerlo más acerca de cosas, ¿sí? Porque si hablamos de personas nos podemos poner tristes, así que mejor eh, mantengámoslo con cosas. Cosas de hace 10 años que les gustaría traer de regreso. No necesariamente personas, porque como les digo, si hablamos acerca de personas, then we're going to get sad, ¿ok? And that's not the idea. It's not that we get sad. Um, so yeah, what is something, something, not someone, from the past that you would like to bring back to today? And uh, of course, an explanation for that. Like, why would you like to bring that back? If it was my case to bring something back from the past, I think that um, I would like to bring back... Uh, hmm. Thinking about the past is pretty intense. I think something that I would like to bring back is a spray. I ha I, a spray. I used to have a spray, a lavender spray, when I was living in the U.S. Um, that I normally would spray on my pillows. And it was like, a, you know, like a nice smell. It was supposed to assist with sleeping. I used to have a lot of trouble um, getting sleep or going to bed when I was in the U.S. I was always like thinking about the things that I was doing. I was thinking about my family. I was thinking about many things. I had so many things in my head. And it was very hard for me to um, to conceal my sleep. So... The family that I used to live with, they had those those sprays uh, in the bathroom. And one time, I remember that I asked what it was that for, and they told me that it was um, basically for spraying it on pillows, and it will, you know, help me to get to sleep. And I tried it, and I can tell you, it was great. I have tried to get it once again because um, it was just amazing. And sometimes um, I have the same problem. I do not have uh insomnia used yet but i do have some issues sometimes going to bed um so yeah that's something that i would like to bring from the past it was around five years ago so you know it's not like too long ago so now it's your turn think about something from your past from your life in a few years ago that you would like to bring back all right so uh i think we're going to start with arriving what would be your thing arriving that you would like to bring back my youth teacher <laughs> your youth yeah all right because <laughs> i remember when i was younger i used to get to get to uh, to go to bed very uh, late late uh -huh. and nowadays uh, at night uh, p.m i'm looking for the bed Jeez. and yeah and i well when i was younger uh, some people used to tell me that my face looks like uh, like I was younger than I was. Uh -huh. And nowadays, people always 
tell me that I look older, older than I am. Oh, that's and sad. that's why I miss my youth. Yeah, that's that's a savage one there. Yeah. Yeah, in my case, you know, it always happens the other way around. Like when I have my beard and hair, like I like I have it now, it's not normal in me. It's just a project. Okay. It's it's kind of sad because I'm actually getting a haircut next week. Um, you guys are not gonna are, gonna are not gonna be able to see me without you know my beard and my my long hair. The thing is that uh, when I cut my hair and beard, I look I honestly I look like I was I don't know twenty, and uh, it happens to me. That's one of the reasons why I normally wear my beard because my girlfriend always tells me that when I am shaved, I look very young and I look younger than her, and she doesn't like it that way. And it's the same for me. I mean, I don't like to to look too young, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, I'm not going to you know to get to there that fast that people start uh, telling me that. Believe I look older. me, you will miss that face. <laughs> you will I, miss that face. Soon. I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it. Yeah, it happens. Well, so your youth. All right, that's of course that's an important thing. Uh, now let's see. In the case of um, 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 Daisy, how about you, Daisy? What will what will be something that you would like to bring back from the past? Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my my first uh, guitar. Oh. Yes. Okay. Uh, because. Uh, my mom gave gave it to me. Uh huh. Oh well. And and broke. broke oh, so uh, yeah, I was I was about to ask what happened to the guitar. You broke it. Eh, mm, my um, my sister is broke my oh, guitar yeah. in my bed. Oh, <laughs> that's sad. Yeah, that's that's very yeah. sad. That's you know something that yeah. Ugh. Okay, ojalá no se pelee con su hermana otra vez en la noche. <laughs> Pero sin mi guitarra, me acabo de acordar de mi guitarra. <laughs> no, hopefully not. Hopefully it's not going to be that way. Um, okay, well, a guitar, of course, it's an important thing. So, great, very good. That will be amazing to have it back. Um, uh, how about Ana Mendoza? I'm talking, of course, about Filomena, okay, not Janira. So, um, Anna, what would be something that you would like to bring back from the past? Good evening, teacher. Me. Yeah, yeah, you. Okay. Um. In my case, I think nothing, teacher. Nothing. Nothing. Really. Yes. There is no because... like a movie or a CD that has gotten has gotten you know broken or ruined that you would like to bring back from the past. No, because my baby did this, uh, disappear. <laughs> but uh -huh. now that I have like, my phone. <laughs> okay. Did it, so I don't miss anything. Well. That's nice. I mean, it's nice to feel okay with the life that you have and with the things that you have nowadays. Um, so yeah, great. Very, very good. So, um, you know, sometimes it happens as well. Sometimes there are many things that we don't just, just follow the flow and we just live the life and we don't think about the things in the past. So that's great. You know, living without strings attached to many things. In my case, I cannot do that. I have so many things that I would like to bring back. Like when I think about it, um, I start thinking about many, many things. Um, but yeah, well, it's it's great. It's great that you um that you feel that way. Now, how about the case of uh Goches? In your case, Goches, what would be something from your past, from let's say ten years ago, seven years ago, that you would like to bring back? Good evening. Uh, it has to be material because I was thinking. Uh, for example, free time, like oh. when we was uh, students, and we don't have to to be worried about uh, fina financial things or or things like that. To be unemployed again. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good one. 
because I also was thinking about that earlier today. Um, because yeah, right now I have made a few investments that hopefully are going to pay off. But right now, I feel like I have spent most of my savings, and uh, I just feel weird, you know. Because normally, I used to, I used to be the friend or the, the one of my friends that had the most savings. But now it's like I just feel like I'm 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 against the wall, and I just don't want to spend any money. I like I have twenty dollars, but I have to keep them for myself because I don't want to spend anything. I don't want to feel like I'm spending anything. Um, and that's something that I had never experienced before because. I had the lucky of starting to work as soon as I graduated. So I started saving. I knew that this would come. I knew that one time I will have to invest, but I didn't expect it to be as hard. Um, but yeah, it's like, I don't feel the freedom of telling like, yeah, okay, let's go to Guatemala and I will pay. And it's like, right now I don't feel like that. And that's kind of something that hurts me in a way, but I know and I expect that my um, my risks are going to pay off. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, having that obligation, having that thing, like you have to pay for this, you have to pay for that. And you have to be an adult is, is very strange and very hard sometimes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a weird thing, but you know, it's part of life and every, everyone has to get through to that. And, uh, the best thing we can do, I think is to be strong about it and, and to keep, you know, uh, a straight face and face things straightforward. But it is, of course, something that is very, very missable. All right. So moving on. Um, how about the case of uh, Andrea? Andrea Sanchez, what will be something in your case that you would like to bring back from your past? Teacher, I, I don't know. <laughs> because, no, really, I think, I think, I think, but I don't find the, the material. Maybe a I phone, want... an album. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't know. A pair of really. glasses. <laughs> I'm very, very happy with. Ah, yeah, no. <laughs> no. I want yeah, a no. new. <laughs> I want a that. new. <laughs> I want a new thing. Uh, I I'm very happy. <laughs> all right, with, that's uh, great. What we have, uh, yes. Uh, with, no, I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right i mean you're not to blame for that it's okay it's it's you know it's just sometimes we are um how can i best describe this we are attached to things and we just feel like those things belong in our life so much and uh, we just feel like you know those things will may make our lives better if we had them again so that's basically why i decided to go for that question but it's okay if you feel great as you are it's just an amazing thing to have. Now, how about the case of you, Alejandro? Um, what would be something in your life that you would like to bring back? I was thinking about that question. It's a very interesting question, teacher. And I was thinking since you since you say, and and I think that maybe um, the simple life that I have in this time. Maybe I was um, a lot of more invisible in, in this time. And I have probably, I don't know, 100% less problems uh, 10 years ago that, that, that I have right. Because I have, a, 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 right now I have a, a few responsibilities that, that I, uh, that make, uh, to have uh, many problems, not only in my, in, not in my, in my personal life, but uh, not in, in my, in my, in your work life. Yes, in my, in my work. Life. So, wow. uh, yeah, and, and that's uh, this is, I don't know, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And since ten years ago, I was, I was more um, relaxed. You know, more relaxed, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I have a, a, a simple life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so similar, kind of, kind of similar, like the, the desire that Gorges had, uh, you know, like having a simple life, uh, tranquility and, and being more relaxed, um, not having so many obligations. So, yeah, it's like sometimes 
for some people, responsibility is great, but in other times, too much responsibility, I think it ends up damaging who we are. And sometimes, you know, we just feel like we are responsible, but we don't, we don't want to be responsible for more things. And I, I also can relate to that. I mean, that's understandable as, you know, you have some things that you, you feel comfortable with, but it feels like you now are in, going beyond that comfortable zone. So, well, understandable. And yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe it can happen. Maybe, maybe yes. you can you can drop off some responsibilities and feel better later. I am thinking in in in, in white no or five quitting 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 yeah mm -hmm. to my job. Oh well, I am I am thinking consider it well. Yes. Y me avisa dónde es para ir a pedirlo yo. No, just okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No worry. Okay, good. All uh, right. Yes. Let's see. How about Francisco? In your case, don't tell me the number is not available, please. So, Francisco. <laughs> Hello, um, good evening, teacher. Um, I'm really nothing. I know nothing is. Really? I answer it. <laughs> yeah, I answer it this day. I've been a traffic accident. I feel um, desanimado, lo siento. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Uh, but, uh, I really know, I know nothing is. Um, uh, today... Um, hoy esta mañana, no, no sé cómo se dice la frase. Mm -hmm. um, eh, new, new object de eh, Enter my life, order, bye bye. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it always happens. You know, things are, are not fixed. And uh, as they say in English, some things are not set on stone. Set, oh, okay. When something is set in stone or set on stone, it means that uh, it's not like, something you know that you cannot take away it's something that you can detach from so it's all right sometimes we just live like that you know having something here something there but you don't have to feel like you're of course dragged into something or trapped into something so it's all right it's all right okay, teacher. Thanks. all right very good now let's see how about the case of jenny in your case jenny is there anything from your life in a few years ago that you would like to bring to bring back for today I I don't miss anything. Really? But yes, I I the moment <laughs> I don't I don't miss anything. But maybe um maybe some some points that someone wrote for me. And then, and I lost them, lost them. Oh, that's odd. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, that's that's something uh -huh. important, you know. Poems. Yeah. yeah. Someone wrote you some poems and you lost them. So you yeah. were irresponsible. No, I'm I'm just, I'm not blaming <laughs> it on you. But yeah, that happens. That happens sometimes. Um. It, 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 because I I I live in San Salvador. Mm -hmm. I live live in San Salvador. Mm -hmm. Uh and. Uh, travel to Santa Ana and I lost them. <laughs> so in the process of moving, you lost the poems. Yes. Ah, yes. well, you know, some things that happen sometimes. Yeah, that's sad. That's sad. All right. How about the case of Nadia? In your case, um, is there anything, Nadia, from your life, I don't know, 10 years ago that you would like to have again to bring back to today? No, teacher, in my case, um, I live my life in uh, the full and the present time, and I don't have anything to the past in my life. Um, but but I really repeat um, in a special moment, for example, when I go when I went to the beach. Um, and when I stay with my friends or my family, I I like to repeat this this moment, but only that. Okay, yeah, that's also something good, you know, repeating some memories, and uh, yeah, it 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 happens to me sometimes as well. I have felt like that, you know, that I would like to relive some um some moments sometimes because. I have made mistakes and that have led to uncomfortable moments as well on those special times. 
and I would like to relive them, to live them in a better way. But life is as it is, and we don't have the power of going back to into time. So, yeah, we just have to live with what we have and just expect for the best, you know. So, yeah. And the last person that I will ask this question tonight is going to be Janira. In your case, Anira, is there anything that you would like to bring back from your past to your current life? Good evening, teacher. Evening. A uh, good time. A good, a good time, teacher. Mm -hmm. That I would like to repeat. Not a good time, but a, uh, something. Like if you have, I don't know, maybe a book that you lost, maybe a purse that you used to love, um, I don't know, maybe a pair of shoes. Oh, that's something for me. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> maybe a pair of shoes, a car you used to have, something like that. Mm -hmm. But the, the question is only positive that I would like to repeat or not. Yeah, something that you would like to repeat or something that you would like to have once again. Um, I I I think I I think that um a car. Uh, I I had a car mm -hmm. that my brother-in-law. Uh huh. Uh, uh, this trash <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the on <clears throat> 24 December mm -hmm. uh, 1995 and I loved that car and it it broke it, yes Ah. And I I love that car. Oh. <laughs> it was it was um, comfortable. Mm -hmm. Comfortable. Uh huh. And um, I lost it. Well, well, that happens. So there you have it. You know, you you, you were able to find something that you would like to bring back. In my case, I mm -hmm. I reacted when I said uh, a pair of shoes because um. Okay, thank you, Miguel, for letting me know. Um, so yeah, I reacted when I said a pair of shoes because I actually got my favorite color from a pair of shoes that I was able to get. It was actually the first pair of shoes that I ever bought. Oh no, wait, no, I had bought some some shoes before by myself. But the thing is that it was the first pair of shoes that I bought in the United States, and okay. um, they were burgundy. I don't know if you guys know that color, but it's very close to the ochre color. Ochre is ochre. See? So it's very, very close to that color. It has a few tones that are different, but um, that's where I got my preference for that color. It's like a very royal, very stylish and elegant color. And uh, I, you know, I, I, I had those shoes. I used to wear them for all special occasions when I was in the, in the U.S. Then when I came back, of course, I brought them with me. And um, I also used to wear them for for special occasions but then of course time went by and they broke and uh, I miss those shoes I have been trying to get the same pair for I don't know for almost two years now but I am not what, able to what find did you them lose, what sorry did you lose? What no did they, you lose? they broke a pair of shoes they broke they I didn't lose them but they they broke entonces se me, oh. ya se me arruinaron, ajá. Entonces he estado tratando de comprarlos o se buscaba aquí, los he buscado en Estados Unidos. Oh, no. I, I, it's, they, they just don't make them anymore. You know, it's because the thing is that they are very specific. What is the brand? It's Nike. Nike SB. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's a pair of Nike. Nike's. It's Nike SB. Um, so yeah, the thing is that they're burgundy, but where they're... Where did you buy, T-shirt? Hmm? Where did you, where did you buy? That's the problem. I bought them at an outlet. Uh, I don't know if you guys ha are related or do you have any idea of what an outlet is? But the thing is that outlets are like a stores yeah. where, you know, where bigger stores send their things when they were not able to sell yeah. them at their stores. 
and uh, it's like a like a collection of everything. Like every every biggest store in America sends their things to an outlet. Um, it's not secondhand. The thing is that they were not just popular at the store. So they send it to the outlet, and in the outlet, they, of course, are going to sell them cheaper because it's like things that people don't like anymore, things that are out of fashion. So, mm. yeah. They and... cannot do all the signs. Sorry? Uh, they have not all the size. Mm -hmm. That's another problem. They do not have all the sizes when it, when things go to mm -hmm. the outlet. So, yeah. Entonces, ese es el problema. Que creo que ya eran un par de zapatos que ya no iban a hacer más. Y pues claro, oh. ¿verdad? Las, las modas cambian. Entonces, y ahora es como que imposible. A mi novia ya le pasé esa misión. Me dijo el otro día, ¿qué querés para tu cumple? Y yo le dije, <ríe> la misión más difícil a la que yo me he enfrentado los últimos dos años. Encontrar otra vez ese par de zapatos. So, I don't know. I don't know if she's going to be able to make it. Hopefully, I, of course, I'm going to continue um, to try to find them. But yeah. Things from the past that I would like to have back. Well, uh, so thank you very much, guys, for participating in the question. As you guys said, I think it was very interesting. So, yeah. Now, with making suggestions, last Thursday, oh, wait. Yeah, it was on Thursday. So last Thursday, we were talking about this, about making suggestions. We had four options or four different ways of, of doing that. We had uh, the first one, which was by using gerunds. Then we have the second one, which was by using um, infinitives. Then by using modal verbs. And then with negative questions. So what we're going to do now is that I would like to hear from you guys and uh, your examples or examples that you could create um, that are related to very close, very close. The only thing is that the Nike is black and it's not the same these ones are like leather esos son como de cuero pero si sí se parecen bastante a esos bastante pero ajá el, el logo de Nike es de cuero y el color si sí es burgundy pero como este es cuero se ve diferente but they're, they're close el problema es ese eh, Alejandro que, o sea <laughs> yo sé y por eso les digo es casi imposible que yo lo quiero iguales <laughs> so it's like it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. And probably I'm not going to make it, but uh, it's something that I'm risk. I'm, I mean, I'm, um, I'm decided to risk it. So, yeah. But thank you. Thank you for taking the time for, uh, for searching it. Okay. Espérenme, se los voy a mostrar para que, para que sepan cómo son. Así no estoy de solo de exigente diciéndoles que esto, que lo otro. Porque así tengo una foto incluso. Bueno, tengo un montón de fotos que les tomaba, pero tengo una this one right here so i will um i think i'll show you guys here on the camera let me see because i don't want to send it anywhere ah dang it come on Por Dios Santo. there there you go ah no puede ser no mejor la voy a mandar a whatsapp el punto es que son los let me see Where's the group? It's over here. Solo para ver una vez para que no haya problema tanto con corporativo. So there we go. Those are the ones. So those are the shoes that I once got. And if you can tell when you see the picture, um, I was very fond of the color. I bought two different pairs of shoes that were the same color. And I even brought a pair of shoes of the same color to my sister that they were very very um similar to the ones on the upper side but yeah those are the shoes that i once had and that i will love to have again so with suggestions i hope you guys suggest me to forget what about uh forgetting about getting those shoes you know now um the idea here is that i would like to hear you guys creating suggestions or giving suggestions so Think about it. Think about um, a suggestion you can you can provide. You can use e any of the forms. Um, the things that you have to keep in mind is that when you use gerunds, of course, you're going to start with something like um, a question. It's going to be a question. That's one of the things. Um, and you're going to start with something like what about or have you ever thought about. And the thing is also to consider that you're going to use about before the the, uh, the gerund and before the suggestion itself. 
Um, so yeah, then with infinitives, it's easier because it's a sentence. It's not going to be a question. And it can be a simple sentence as the one that we have here. It might be a good idea to check. Uh, and here, this part, when we say to check out, is the part of the verb. So this is what you're going to change. And of course, the rest of the sentence. But if you start with saying it might be a good idea, then you're introducing um, the fact that what you're about to say is a suggestion. So it might be a good idea. Then, of course, you change the, the verb and the context or the rest of the sentence that describes what the good idea is. Then we have one thing you could do is, and here, once again, um, it depends on what verb you're using. You can or not use the particle to. But in this case, for example, it will be better. Any uh, one thing you could do is to go, and then of course, you know, you can continue with the sentence to go to uh, an online store. I never try with an outlet. Well, <laughs> thing is to go in an online store to find, you know, the things that you're looking for. Then next one up is um, with models. Model verbs are um, weird, but the ones that we're gonna be using for suggestions are normally going to be could and should. Those are the two most common ones. You can use can, you can, but it's not the best idea. The, the more appropriate ones are going to be could and should. So maybe you could go or maybe you should go. Both of them are going to be suggestions. However, when you use could, you're being more polite. Okay, when you use could, you are leaving the decision to the other person, to the receiver of the receiver of the message. But when you're using should, uh, it goes from being a suggestion to almost being a direction. Okay, almost. It's not a direction itself, but it's almost a direction. Cuando hablamos de direction en inglés es importante que no estamos hablando acerca de lo mismo en español, verdad? Que direcciones, sino que más bien como una orden. Sí, a direction in English is more es más como una orden. Como cuando ustedes le dicen a alguien que haga algo. So yeah, so maybe you could, it's a suggestion. Maybe you should, it's almost a direction. Como les digo, es casi, casi como estar dando una orden. Si yo digo, quizá deberías, ¿sí? Es una sugerencia, sí, pero es una sugerencia que es bastante incisiva. O sea, su opinión, la opinión que yo estoy facilitando es bastante incisiva hacia el tema. Entonces, eh, suena casi como una orden. Then we have with negative questions. Why don't you? Um, or, yeah, normally it's why don't you. Con situaciones así como estas que son eh, sugerencias, normalmente va a ser por qué no, ¿sí? O sea, como por qué no haces esto, por qué no haces lo otro. Claro, hasta aquí el don't you es que ustedes se van a quedar con la fórmula, digamos, con la parte que vamos a utilizar en la mayoría de casos. Then, of course, we change the verb and we change the, the, the topic of the sentence or the topic of the question in this case. So, uh, I would like to get to hear from you guys. What are some suggestions that you can give? I am not, I'm going to be sending them on through the chat. So, I would like to start hearing from some of you and I will be calling your names to hear for some suggestions you may have. The first person that I would like to get a suggestion from is going to be Iris, Iris Hernández. Iris dijo, y solo para esto me llama para la pregunta, no me, no me llamó. So, I'm sorry, teacher, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. But I have the one, my homework, Mr. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Do you, do you have any suggestion you can provide? No, teacher, I don't understand. It's the moment I, I have uh, my work. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Then. Excuse me, teacher. No, it's okay. No problems. Okay. Um, how about the case of you, coaches? Do you have any suggestions you can provide? Any example, of course, of course, of a, of a suggestion. Okay. For example, if the topic were uh, to get relaxed, uh, what about looking? No. Mm. Have you thought about joining a uh, yoga class? All right, very good. Have you thought about joining a yoga class? A 
yeah, yoga class. I think it would be more like, I think it's a class, yeah. So yeah, have you thought about joining a, a yoga class? Great. Okay, as I said, your suggestions are going to be available on the chat. Sí, se las voy a estar mandando a través del chat. Uh, next person, let's see. I think I would like to hear from Maritza. Do you have any suggestion in mind, Maritza, that you can provide us an example with any of the forms? With modal of mass verbs? Okay. Um, maybe full sleep uh -huh. to early or sleep early every night all right because you need a rest wait all right uh so maybe you could sleep earlier aquí vamos a cambiar algo you could go to sleep earlier as you need to rest Perdón que les cambie ahí, pero solo es que estoy tratando de darle una mejor forma, ¿verdad? So maybe you could go okay. to sleep earlier as you need to rest. Aquí es como una, una sugerencia como más completa, sí, decirle, ¿verdad? Quizá deberías irte a dormir más temprano, ya que necesitas descansar. Eso de incluir el as sería como para introducir esa idea, ¿verdad? Ya que, sí, ya que. Ese as ahí se utiliza básicamente para referirse a eso, ya que. All right, great. That's a good example. Maybe you could go to sleep earlier as you need to rest. Um, here, you could use a comma after earlier. Podríamos utilizar una coma después de earlier, ya que estamos también incluyendo un tema un tanto distinto. So yeah, you could. Um, how about Jenny? Do you have any suggestion in mind, Jenny? An example of a suggestion you can provide? Uh, would you eat healthy? Oh, me? Oh, uh -huh. me? Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought I thought you were providing the suggestion. Uh, <laughs> so, it could be something like, it might be a good idea. ¿De ¿Qué tema le gustaría? O sea, ¿qué, qué, ¿qué sugerencia le gustaría dar? Piensen en el último tema que estuve dialogando con un amigo, sí, a quien usted le dio una sugerencia de qué hacer. Como que comiera saludable. Yo ok. El, el... Ok. Oh. It might be a good idea to follow a healthier eating um, routine. It might be a good idea to follow a healthier eating routine. O sea, debería o sería una buena idea seguir una eh, rutina alimenticia más saludable. Sí, sería una buena idea seguir una rutina alimenticia más saludable. Este tipo de oraciones son las que en muchas ocasiones hacen que el inglés parezca un idioma complicado. Porque eh, la primera línea, sí, it might be a good idea to follow, se traduce casi de forma directa en español, ¿verdad? Sería una buena idea seguir. Luego, uh, a healthier eating routine es donde se hace un solo salto. Porque pasamos primero a eh, una rutina. Pues decimos primero rutina, alimenticia, y luego decimos más saludable. Entonces es como que vamos hacia atrás. Pero es por la forma en la que en, en inglés se organizan los adjetivos. En este caso, los adjetivos van siguiendo, ¿verdad? Ese, ese, ese ritmo. O sea, healthier es un adjetivo, eating también es un adjetivo, y routine es el noun que esos adjetivos están describiendo. Entonces, por eso, se ve así como diferente. Pero en muchas ocasiones, lo principal que debemos hacer es recordar, o más bien memorizarnos, el orden en el que los adjetivos van a ser colocados. Pero bueno, Ana, oh, sorry, Danira. Um, teacher, hmm? uh, could you help me about that this sentence is, is okay or not? Sure. It might be a good idea to erase enough these days about the heat. Okay, it might be a good idea to 
is hydrate. Uh -huh, to hydrate. hydrate enough uh -huh. these days about the heat. Days, mm, el about sería el único que sería el cambiado. Sí. Uh -huh. Sería, por ejemplo, uh, si nos quedamos con la palabra heat, sería because. Sí. Because uh -huh. of the heat. Because of the heat. Be Ahora. Why because, teacher? Eh, porque tenemos que decir el debido a. Sí. Porque uh -huh. el about es acerca de. Entonces, Ajá. si yo digo, eh, sería una buena idea que te hidrates acerca de estos días o acerca de esta calor, eh, uh -huh. sería complicado. Entonces, si digo, sería uh -huh. una buena idea hidratarse suficiente durante estos días por el calor. Así se va a entender el because, ¿sí? Por el because calor. Por. Ajá, ah, okay. por el calor. Uh -huh. Entonces, el because uh -huh. es, el caso, es, el, es el detalle que tiene. O sea, que se puede interpretar de formas distintas dependiendo del contexto. Um, ok. En este caso, como está ya en el medio y como lo estoy utilizando también con la palabrita of, because of, eso significa... Ah, because of. Because of, uh -huh. ajá, eso significa como debido a, ¿sí? Ok. Ajá, ahora, okay. Eh, la otra, el but, otro ejemplo que tú... Sí. But it is another, another, another way to, to say... Eh, Por el calor. No. Eh, debido a... Do it too. Do too. Uh -huh. Do too. Ahora, el detalle es que do too es más un debido a cuando yo estoy tratando de como de explicar el por qué algo se hace. En este caso, ah, okay. es, ya, como ya. es un consejo, ¿verdad? Es ya. hazlo por esto. No el por qué, okay. sino el por, nada más. Uh -huh. Ok, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. So, I had another, another example in mind when you, you were saying this. Uh, it might be a good idea to hydrate enough these days. Y sería because of the heat wave. Esa sería como la otra, sí. Uh, pero esa es como más, más, ¿cómo decirlo? Más picky, sí. It might be, it might be a good idea to hydrate enough. Oh, bueno, vamos a cambiarlo un poco. To stay hydrated, sí. To stay well hydrated. Hydrated. Okay. No sé cuál es la diferencia aquí. Well, I'm going to say it like that. Well hydrated um, because of the heat wave. Because of the heat wave. Cuando hablamos del heat wave, se refiere a la ola de calor. Sí, la palabra wave eh, la vamos a utilizar para hablar acerca de olas. So, because of the heat wave. En este momento se supone que eso es lo que estamos viendo. Esperemos que así sea. Y no vaya a ser que después nos quedemos con esto, ¿verdad? Por tanto tiempo más. Um, so, yeah. Because of the heat wave. So, uh, another example. This is going to be the last one. And it's going to come from Daisy. Do you have an example in mind, Daisy, to, for a suggestion that you can provide? Example. Mm-hmm. With models, those bear. Okay. Maybe you could go to visit your mom. Okay, maybe you could go visit en este caso, solo vamos a decir go visit. Maybe you could go visit um, your mom. Y ahí le podemos poner this Wednesday. Para que sea mejor, ¿verdad? Wednesday. So, yeah. There we go. So, maybe you could go visit your mom this Wednesday. Es un consejo quizás para un amiga amigo que se ha peleado con su mamá. Y yo le digo, ¿verdad? Quizá podrías ir a visitarla este miércoles. Ok, now, we, I had these questions over here, but I don't feel like, um, you know, going through them right now. Only we're gonna... Oh, sorry, ¿alguien estaba alzando la mano? No sé. No. Bueno. Um, so, it's only as, you know, a general question. Only if you guys know. So, the first one is, do you know when World War I began? Do you know when World War One began? Any ideas of when did it begin? 
¿Alguna idea de cuándo inició la guerra, la Primera Guerra Mundial? 1940. 1914, yes, that's, a, that's correct. So, 1914, that was uh, the start year of the First World War. How about this one? How long have the United, uh, the United Nations been in existence? How long have the United Nations been in existence? Very good, boys. August 1914. So how long have the United Nations been in existence? Any idea, guys, on how long that is? The UN, just to um, to make it clear, was formed after the end of the Second World War. So uh, if you guys know about that, you might have an idea of how long that has been. So for how long have the United Nations been in existence? Maybe... 1950? Uh, that was close. That was close, but it's not necessarily the answer. I would like to hear, cuando se pregunta por how long, se pregunta por hasta la fecha, cuánto tiempo va. Sí, hasta ahora, cuánto tiempo va. So, how long? 78 years, teacher. 78 years. Very good. Yes. So, it would be, uy, 78 years. Yes, ahora, la co respuesta correcta o completa Debería okay. ser. The UN has been in existence for about. Esto lo el about lo decimos para no correr riesgos, porque a veces hay personas que son muy exactas, ¿verdad? Y le pueden decir, no, pero no ha sido el, el aniversario todavía de las Naciones Unidas, no sé qué, no sé cuánto. So, yeah, you can, you can use something like this. The UN has been in existence for about 75, 78 years. Alrededor de 78 años. So, good. Very good. Thank you very much, Alejandro. All right. And... Uh, Body says 72. Hmm. Well, we're going to leave it at 75. <laughs> you know, I haven't... Oh, it, it, got born, it got born in 1945. That's what I remember. The, yeah, that's what I remember. The, the second... Uh -huh, that's what I remember. War. It was 1945. But so, I did not necessarily do the math, to be honest. So, yeah. So, from, from 45... To 2000, how much would that be? 45 to 2 is 55 plus 23. Please, 55 plus 23. See how much it is. So, yeah, that's 78. Yes. So, yeah, it will be 78. Okay, well, uh, and this one was... Um, World War One. It started. It started in August, um, nineteen fourteen. All right. I don't know if you guys have ever watched this movie, nineteen fourteen. Uh, if you haven't, it's it's a very good one. So if you have any time, you know, if you can find it, uh, in HBO Max, I highly recommend it. Well, next one. How long were the Beatles together for? Do you guys have any idea of how long were the Beatles together for? This one is another one. It's something that it's a little bit out of my spectrum. Uh, I do have an idea. However, I am not going to debate with any of you if you have a better idea. Uh, but let's see. Okay. Body says for 10 years. What we do, as I said, guys, what we do when we say uh, things like this, is that we normally go with the safest route and we say for about they were together together for about for about um 10 years so there we have it they were together for about 10 years o sea, estuvieron juntos por alrededor de 10 años ahora yes nadia tell me teacher uh, i have a question mm -hmm. we 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 can use about is a um, number exact. No, in exact numbers, we say uh, four and the, the the number when we're sure. Okay, when we're completely sure about something, uh, we say just the, the number. Like if it's an amount of years, uh, we can even go ahead and, and say the date, you know, like uh, that happened 
in and then you mentioned the exact date when something happened. But we use about when we when we want to play it safe and we, when we're not completely sure of how long that was. So yeah, that's when we use about. But if you're sure, if you are like certain about something, if you have proof even of when something happened, you can say it as it comes, like with the date and the day and the month and everything as clear as possible. So yeah, so they were together for about 10 years. Uh, I understood that it was seven years actually, but I'm not sure, as I said. I mean, the Beatles were not my cup of tea and are not my cup of tea. So I'm not here to um to debate about the Beatles. So yeah, moving on. Here is where we took these examples from, okay? Or this question from, is from this conversation. Uh, so this is something we're gonna practice, not tonight. However, we're gonna do it tomorrow as we do not have, you know, enough time anymore. So the title of this conversation is I'm good at history. All right. So that's the title that we're going to we're going to be following. I'm good at history. Then we have in this conversation two people, Emma and Steve. Those are the two ones that are going to be taking part in it. And uh, the conversation goes as following. Now, look, here is a quiz on events of the 20th century. Oh, let me give it a try. I'm good at history. All right. First question. When did World War I begin? Or sorry, begin, begin. I think it began in 1917. Huh. And how long has the United Nations been in existence? Uh, since Kennedy became president in 1961. Hmm. Next question. How long were the Beatles together? Well, they started in 1965 and broke up in 1980. So they were together for 15 years. So how am I doing so far? Not very well. Not one of your answers is correct. So there you have it. Hopefully you guys are not that kind of person. The kind that says that is good at something and then at the end when you try them out, eh, it's completely the opposite. So yeah, here, this guy, he was kind of lost. He didn't really have a clue of what he was doing. Um, But I would like to have two volunteers to practice this conversation because it's very easy. We don't really have a lot of things here to analyze about it. Um, So yeah, we have Nadia and who would like to join Nadia into the practice? Necesito a un voluntario más para que haga la práctica de la conversación. So I think... If you guys do not get motivated on your own, I'm going to call you out. So it's going to be uh, Boris. So Nadia and Boris. Hi, Boris. I am Emma. I read Emma. Okay. All right. Let's start. Um, okay. Look here the quiz on Evan of the 20th century. Oh, let me give it a, a try. I am good at, at history. All right. First question. Where did you World War One begin? I think it, it began in 1917. Oh, and how long has the United Nation been in exist in existence? It since Kennedy became president in 1961. Um, next question. How long were the, the Beatles together? Well, they started in 1965 and broke up in 1880. So they were together for 15 years. So, so I, I'm doing so far. Not very well. No one of your answers is correct. <laughs> All right. So I had, um, I had to cheat. <laughs> yeah. In your okay. case, guys, do you guys consider to be good at history? Do you think you're good at history? Boris, ¿qué cree usted? ¿Usted es bueno con la historia? A little. <laughs> A little? All yeah. right. Yeah. In my case, something that I do 
that I'm passionate about is geography. I do like history. I like to watch like um you know history documentaries and stuff. I am a huge fan of like the whole story about the world wars because like those probably have been some of the worst things that um humanity has caused in this world. And uh, I do like to watch, you know, history related to that. But I'm not the best. Uh, something that I do like is to know a lot about geography. And uh, I cannot actually remember one occasion in the school that I used to work in, in the United States. They had um, this, like, commemoration, celebration of cultures. And they normally dress the, um, the principal's office with like flags from all over the world okay so they had flags from many countries there and since i was very young whenever i saw like a map of mundi or whenever i saw um like a bunch of flags together i would love to to start calling you know what flag is this and what flag is that and uh, that day i went into the principal's office i don't, don't remember what i was doing but i do remember i went into the principal's office and i was very friends I mean, I was very good friends with one of the one of the secretaries there. And she asked me, like, um, for example, I remember that she pointed at the Nigerian flag and she said that it was South American. And I was like, no, that's that's so wrong because it's Nigeria. It's in Africa. Then she pointed, I think it was to the Nepal um, uh, flag. And she said it was European. And I was like, no, it's not European. Nepal is actually Asian. Then um, she pointed at the Peruvian flag and she said that it was European. And I was like, no, that's very, very wrong because Peru, it's actually South American as well. And then I started telling her, you know, like many flags. And then she was like, they actually even interviewed me. Sí, hasta, hasta una entrevista me hicieron porque fue como que no esperaban que yo supiera eso. Y era como que, I mean, it's something, you know, normal. Now, I don't know if you guys have family in the U.S. or how much family you have over there. But something that is very true is that many schools in the United States, they don't really teach students important lessons. And many students, they don't learn important lessons because um, maybe they are hard when it comes to homework. Maybe students over there have to do a lot of homework but they don't learn as much. Like there is a lot of things that they don't know because they don't have a lot of like contact with things. They don't experience things. And it's very sad because um, I feel like, you know, most of the time we see the examples of the media and how they present the United States as, a, as an amazing country. But there are many things that lack when it comes to learning and when it comes to schooling people. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just an example of things that, that happen sometimes as, for example, here, we don't really have a full subject dedicated to history because we do have estudios sociales, but they are not fully dedicated to history. There is some history here and there, but it's not only history. In the U.S., they do have uh, a, a full subject for many years that is dedicated to history. And even then, students don't get to learn a lot about history. So it's kind of sad, you know. It's kind of kind of sad to see those, those things happening. But well, as I said, this conversation is going for tomorrow. Sí, mañana vamos a estar practicando esta conversación ahorita. La única cosa, um, creo que sería buscar algunos de los linking sounds. No sé qué tanto ustedes hayan estado practicando eso. Porque como les he dicho, es algo bien importante. Creo que a ningún grupo hasta la fecha le he hecho tanto énfasis en eso porque anteriormente me dijeron, ¿verdad? Que ellos escuchaban que yo hablaba de una forma peculiar, o sea, que pronunciaba cosas de forma peculiar pero que no sabían por qué. Entonces yo les dije que es básicamente por eso, a raíz de la utilización de los linking sounds, que eso de verdad, créanme, que hace que uno suene más, más natural, más fluido, más rápido. A veces, claro, ¿verdad? Nos equivocamos, pero pues es también normal. Eh, pero aquí, por ejemplo... Um, este primero, de hecho, here's a quiz, here's a quiz. Sí, ahí hay, hay, hay una, una posibilidad para utilizarlo. Here's a quiz on the events on the 20th century. So yeah, here's a quiz. Um, then this one, let me give it a try. Sí, en lugar de decir, let me give it a try, let me give it a try. Let me give it a try. Um, then, uh, 
this one is not, I do not advise you guys to use clinking sounds with these phrases like World War II or World War I because those are already complicated sentences to say. So do not use clinking sounds there. Uh, then, yeah, been in existence. Yes, that will be another opportunity of using linking sounds. Been in existence. See, been in existence. So that's another chance. Then, uh, were the Beatles together? They started, uh, broke up. No, so they were together for, no. How am I doing so far? This one is another chance. How am I doing? See, how am I doing? So you don't have to stop to say, how am I doing? You say, how am I doing? How am I doing? Uh, and basically, that will be it. Sí, esos serían como los linking sounds que podríamos utilizar o que podríamos encontrar en esta conversación. Pero bueno, mañana vamos a tener el chance de practicarla, ¿sí? So, for now, basically, that's it. This hour, I felt like it fly by so quickly. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Thank you guys very much for your attention and your participation in this evening's class. I hope you have an amazing night, and I also hope I'll see you tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow we have class. Wednesday, we don't have class. And then we have a class on Thursday and Friday. So have a good one and see you tomorrow. See you. Bye. Thank bye, you. Bye, 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 bye guys. Bye.